Hello my lovelies, it is time for another book haul, so stay tuned. Sorry if I've got some weird shadows going on, it's from the sun and the windows and everything. But I have accumulated only 17 books since the last time I did a haul. Not terrible. Um, I think that was probably close to what I read in the month. So, I mean, I'm definitely not balanced out, but <laughs> uh, better than usual, I suppose. Uh, I have books here. Uh, one that I got out of my little free library. Uh, two that came as gifts. One that I pre-ordered from Book Depository. And the rest, I believe, I pre-ordered from Barnes & Noble. And I feel like I need to like change this angle so that the sun is not in this weird place right now. <laughs> okay, this is a little better. <laughs> I'm hiding from the sun. <laughs> okay, so the first book here is one that came out of my little free library. And something that's really cool about it is it was the author that put it there. That is Stubborn as L by Stephanie Kins. And apparently she lives in my neighborhood. And she left a little note on uh, a bookmark. And yeah, I just thought it was really cool. This is her debut novel. Stubborn as L. L. Riley has had a rough week, full of mishaps, mistakes, and misfortunes. When a witness claims to have seen a murder, the seemingly simple balance of L's life is upset. The unreliability of the witness leaves Elle to question if a murder actually occurred. She is determined to uncover the nature of the crime. Elle's skills as an investigative journalist and part-time private investigator lead to her teaming up with a no-nonsense local sheriff to help solve the mystery. But with no body, no crime scene, and their only clue, a mystery man with a mystery truck, the pair will have a hard time cracking the case. Hopefully they can catch a possible killer before their differing personalities cause them to kill each other. Elle struggles between her tenacious determination to solve the mystery and her fear of becoming a victim. Will her ask for forgiveness, not permission personality lead to her ultimate demise? Okay, next up are the two books. This lighting is just weird. Let's see if I can try, <laughs> try this. Well, okay, it's not too bad. All right, next up are the two books that came as gifts. These came from one of my coffee patrons, Amanda, and it was just super sweet of her. Uh, she sent me One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. I'm super excited for this. And she also sent me How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. Also super excited. So. One to watch, it says, real love as seen on TV. B. Schumacher is a devastatingly stylish plus size fashion blogger who has amazing friends, a devoted family, legions of Insta followers, and a massively broken heart. Like the rest of America, B. indulges in her weekly obsession, the hit reality show Main Squeeze, the fantasy dates, the kiss off rejections, the surprising number of guys named Chad. But B is sick and tired of the lack of body diversity on the show. Since when is being a size zero a prerequisite for getting engaged on television? Just when B has sworn off dating altogether, she gets an intriguing call. Main Squeeze wants her to be its next star, surrounded by men vying for her affections. B agrees on one condition. Under no circumstances will she actually fall in love. She's in this to supercharge her career, subvert harmful beauty standards, inspire women across America, and get a free hot air balloon ride. That's it. But when the cameras start rolling, Bee realizes things are more complicated than she anticipated. She's in a whirlwind of sumptuous couture, internet culture wars, sexy suitors, and an opportunity, or two, or five, to find messy, real-life love in the midst of a made-for-TV fairy tale. In this joyful, razor-sharp debut, B has to decide whether it might just be worth trusting these men and herself for a chance to live happily ever after. And I am definitely in my 
reality dating TV phase right now and I'm loving it and so I'm super super excited for this. Okay, How to Stop Time by Matt Haig says, how many lifetimes does it take to learn how to live? Tom Hazard has a dangerous secret. He may look like an ordinary 41 year old history teacher, but he's been alive for centuries. From Elizabethan England to Jazz Age Paris, from New York to the South Seas, Tom has seen it all. As long as he keeps changing his identity, he can stay one step ahead of his past and stay alive. The only thing he must not do is fall in love. But what if the one thing he can't have is the only thing that might save him? Ooh. Okay, next up is the book that I pre-ordered from Book Depository. That is The Love Match by Piryanka Taslim. And this says, Zahara Khan is basically Bangladeshi royalty, but being a princess doesn't pay the bills in New Jersey. Pressured by her mother to marry into money, Zahara pretends to date the wealthy but aloof Haran. Meanwhile, her feelings for dishwasher Naeem, who supports her dreams more than anyone else, grow stronger by the day. For once, Zahara can have her rasamali and eat it too. But life and boys can be a royal pain. Torn between her head and her heart, can Zahara find her perfect love match while keeping everyone happy? This sounds so cute. Okay, and now I believe the rest of these all came from Barnes & Noble. So the first one I have here is My Dear Henry, a Jekyll and Hyde remix by Kaylin Bayron. And this says, They think they know our story, but I can assure you, they do not. London, 1885. Gabrielle Utterson, a 17-year-old law clerk, has returned to London for the first time since his life and that of his dearest friend Henry Jekyll was derailed by a scandal that led to his and Henry's expulsion from the London School of Medicine. Whispers about the true nature of Gabriel and Henry's relationship have followed the boys for two years and now Gabriel has a chance to start again. But Gabriel doesn't want to move on, not without Henry. His friend has become distant and cold since the disastrous events of the year before and now his letters have stopped altogether. Desperate to discover what's become of him, Gabrielle takes to watching the Jekyll house. In doing so, Gabrielle meets Hyde, a strangely familiar young man with white hair and a magnetic charisma. He claims to be friends with Henry, and Gabrielle can't help but begin to grow jealous at their apparent closeness, especially as Henry continues to act like Gabriel means nothing to him. But the secret behind Henry's apathy is the is only the first part of the deeper mystery that has begun to coalesce. Monsters of all kinds prowl within the London fog, and not all of them are out for blood. Dot, dot, dot. Awesome. Okay. Next up, we have Never Never by Colleen Hoover and Taryn Fisher. This says, Never stop, never forget, just remember. The number one New York Times bestselling author of It Starts With Us joins forces with the New York Times bestselling author of The Wives. Together they have created a gripping, twisty, romantic mystery unlike any other. Charlize Winwood and Silas Nash have been best friends since they could walk. They've been in love since the age of 14. But as of this morning, they are complete strangers. Their first kiss, their first fight, the moment they fell in love, every memory has vanished. Now Charlie and Silas must work together to uncover the truth about what happened to them and why. But the more they learn about the couple they used to be, the more they question why they were ever together to begin with. Forgetting is terrifying, but remembering might be worse. Okay, next up is Tell Me What Really Happened by Chelsea Sadati. And this says... There are stories about the woods around Salvation Creek and the people who have gone missing there. Now their friend is one of them. It was all her idea. They would get away from their parents and spend the weekend camping. Down by Salvation Creek, the five of them would make s'mores, steal kisses, share secrets. But sometime around midnight, she vanished. Now the four friends who came back are under suspicion, and they each have a very different story to tell about what happened in the woods. The clock is ticking. What are they hiding? Who is lying? Dark truths must come to light if their friend is to be found. Told entirely through first-person police interviews, this riveting YA mystery asks what really happened that night. Oof, very excited for that too. 
I'm excited for all of these. I don't know why I keep saying that. Okay, next up we have Right Girl, Wrong Side by Jenny Baird. And this says, love is here to stay, but so are their families. Busy flower shop manager, Evita Machado, can't wait to get to Nantucket. With a bad breakup behind her, relaxing at the shore with her folks, her brothers, and their families sounds like the sure cure for heartache, and their vacation destination promises to be amazing. But when they arrive at the quaint rose-covered cottage, another group has already put down stakes, the Hatfields. Ryan Hatfield was Evita's former crush from high school, but their business rival moms refused to let them date. Now history professor Ryan is here for a week with his parents, who won them this oceanfront rental in a society silent auction. Once it's clear there's been a double booking due to a bidding mistake, Ryan's mom digs in her heels, meaning to stay. When Evita's mom won't back down either, both sides tepidly agree to share the luxury accommodations by dividing the cozy space. With the boisterous machados li livening things up and the straight-laced hatfields tamping them down, can Evita and Ryan keep the peace between the warring factions while fostering a growing chemistry between the two of them? Also, it has like a Romeo and Juliet kind of vibe, but hopefully no death. Next is The Love Wager by Lynn Painter. This says, two people make a wager who can find, on who can find love first, not realizing what they should be betting on is each other. In this new romantic comedy by Lynn Painter, New York Times bestselling author of Mr. Wrong Number, Haley Piper is turning over a new leaf. After belly crawling out of a hotel room, hello rock bottom, she decides it's time to become a full-on adult. She gets a new apartment, a new haircut, and a new wardrobe. But when she logs on to the dating app that she has determined will find her new love, she sees none other than Jack Marshall, the guy whose room she snuck out of. After agreeing they are absolutely not interested in each other, Jack and Haley realize they're each other's perfect wing person in the searches for the one. They text about their dates, often scheduling them at the same restaurant so that if things don't go well, the two of them can get tacos afterward. Spoiler, they get a lot of tacos together. Discouraged by the lack of prospects, Jack and Haley make a wager to see who can find true love first. But when they agree to be fake dates for a weekend wedding, all bets are off. As they pretend to be a couple, lines become blurred and each struggles to remember why the other was a bad idea to begin with. Next up is The Lonely Hearts Book Club by Lucy Gilmore. I absolutely love this cover. It's so freaking cute. This says, everybody has a reason to get lost inside a book. Sloane Parker lives a small contained life as a librarian in her small contained town. She never thinks of herself as lonely, but still she looks forward to that time every day when the old curmudgeon Arthur McLaughlin comes to browse the shelves and cheerfully insult her. Their sparring is such a highlight of Sloane's day that when author doesn't show up one morning, she's instantly concerned. And then another day passes, and another. Anxious Sloane tracks the old man down, only to discover him all but bedridden, and desperately struggling, struggling to hide how happy he is to see her. Wanting to bring more cheer to author's, Arthur's gloomy life, Sloane creates an impromptu book club. Slowly, the lonely misfits of their sleepy town begin to find one another, and in their book club, they find the joy of unlikely friendship. Because, as it turns out, everyone has a special book in their heart and a reason to get lost and eventually found within the pages. Oh, sounds so cute. Okay, next up we have Iceberg by Jennifer A. Nielsen. This is based on Titanic, which I love. <laughs> Uh, this says, a mystery not meant to be solved, a ship never meant to sink, the adventure of a lifetime. Hazel Rothberry is traveling all alone from her home in England aboard the celebrated ship Titanic. Following the untimely death of her father, Hazel's mother is sending her to the United States to work in a factory that, so that she might send money home to help her family make ends meet. But Hazel harbors a secret dream. She wants to be a journalist, and she just knows that if she can write and tell a story about the Titanic's maiden voyage, she could earn enough money to support her family and not have to go to a sweatshop. When Hazel discovers that her mother didn't send her with enough money for a ticket, she decides she must stow away on board the storied ship. With the help of a porter named Charlie and a sweet first-class passenger named Sylvia, 
Hazel explores the opulent ship in secret, but a haunting mystery quickly finds her. The danger only intensifies when calamity strikes, and readers will be caught up in the terror and suspense alongside Hazel as she fights to save her friends and herself. Best-selling author Jennifer A. Nielsen weaves an extraordinary tapestry of survival and disaster in this magnificent thriller. I'm so excited to read this. Next up is Missing Clarissa by Ripley Jones. This says, Perfect for fans of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Ripley Jones's Missing Clarissa is a gripping novel about two friends who start a true crime podcast with dangerous consequences. In August 1999, dazzling popular cheerleader Clarissa Campbell disappeared from a party in the woods outside the rural town of Orville, Washington. The police questioned her friends, her teachers, and the adults who knew her, who all had something to hide. Thanks to Clarissa's beauty, the mystery captured the attention of the nation. But with no leads and no body, the case soon grew cold. Despite the efforts of internet sleuths and true crime aficionados, Clarissa has never been found, dead or alive. More than 20 years later, Orville High School juniors and best friends Blair and Cameron start a true crime podcast determined to unravel the story of what, or who, happened to this rural urban legend. In the process, they uncover a nest of dirty small-town secrets, the sordid truth of Clarissa's relationship with her charismatic boyfriend, and a high school art teacher turned small-town power broker who had a very good reason for wanting Clarissa dead. Such a good reason, in fact, that they might have to make him the highlight of their next episode. But does an ugly history with a missing girl make him guilty of murder? Or are two teenage girls about to destroy the life of an innocent man and help the true killer walk free? Next up is The Neighbor Favor by Christina Forrest. And this says, A shy bookworm enlists her charming neighbor to help her score a date. Not knowing he's the obscure author she's been corresponding with in this sparkling and heart-fluttering romance by Christina Forrest. Shy, bookish, and admittedly awkward, Lily Green has always felt inadequate compared to the rest of her accomplished family, who strive for black excellence. She dreams of becoming a children's book editor, but she's been frustratingly stuck in the nonfiction division for years without a promotion in sight. Lily finds escapism in her correspondence with her favorite fantasy author, and what begins as two lonely people connecting over email turns into a tentative friendship and possibly something else Lily won't let herself entertain, until he ghosts her without a word. Months later, Lily is still crushed, but she's determined to get a hold of her life, starting with finding a date for her sister's wedding. And the perfect person to help her is Nick Brown, her charming, attractive new neighbor, who she feels drawn to for reasons she can't explain. But little does she know, Nick is an author, her favorite fantasy author. Nick, who has his reasons for using a pen name and pushing people away, soon realizes that the beautiful, quiet girl from down the hall is the same Lily he fell in love with over email months ago. Unwilling to complicate things even more between them, he agrees to set her up with someone else, Though this simple favor between two neighbors is anything but. Not when he can't get her off his mind. Okay, next we have Too Wrong to be Right by Melanie Johnson. This says, Kat is on a mission to find her happily ever after. After her latest jerk of a boyfriend dumps her and ditches her with his pet hedgehog, Floris Kat Kalowski is done chasing after Mr. Wrong. With her two best friends moving on to more serious relationships, she's ready to stop repeating the same mistakes that are leaving her stuck in the single lane. Armed with a list of qualities for her perfect Mr. Right, Kat swears off dating until she finds him. Then, in a meat disaster involving a corpse and a salty cockatoo, she stumbles across Mick O'Sullivan at his family's funeral home. Their immediate chemistry warns Kat to keep things platonic. After all, following her heart never worked out in the past, and this time she's determined to listen to her head. But can Kat and Mick just be friends? As she gets to know him better, the lines blur, and Kat starts to wonder if she's gotten it wrong and Mick is exactly who she's been looking for. Alright, next up we have The Island by Natasha Preston. This says... They said goodbye to their friends and family for the weekend. 
they weren't counting on forever. Jagged Island, a private amusement park for the very rich or the very influential. Liam, James, Will, Ava, Harper, and Paisley, social media influencers with millions of followers, have been invited for an exclusive weekend before the park opens. They'll create posts and videos for their channels and report every second of their VIP treatment. When the teens arrive, they're stunned. The resort is even better than they imagined. Their hotel rooms are unreal. The park's themed rides are incredible, and the island is hauntingly beautiful. Their jam-packed schedule seems to cover every moment of their visit, but soon they realize that something's missing, getting off the island alive. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, next up we have Haley Aldridge is Still Here by Elisa R. Sloan. And this says, from the author of The Unraveling of Cassidy Holmes comes another sharp, page-turning novel about a former child star and Hollywood it girl who is now fighting back against the conservatorship that has controlled her life for the past decade. It's been years since anyone really thought about Haley Aldridge, a child star turned Hollywood royalty. Haley spent years in L.A. partying and being plastered across the front pages of all the tabloids, but quietly disappeared after a whirlwind marriage and divorce and very public breakdown. Once the media wrung every last drop out of the drama, they moved on to the next It Girl. But Haley is still here. For more than a decade, she's been trapped in a conservatorship that had every aspect of her life controlled by her parents. She goes nowhere and does nothing without their approval. Her visits with her kids are monitored, her fan mail is censored, and she's a prisoner in her own home. She thought things might change once she was well enough to work, but the restrictions got even tighter as she continued to bring in money, the only thing her parents care about. Haley is beginning to realize that this nightmare is her actual life, and she's sick of it. When the hashtag, hashtag help Haley, starts to emerge on social media and the public starts thinking critically about what happened to her all those years ago, there's finally some momentum on her side. With an upcoming court date to review the status of the conservatorship, Haley might finally have a chance to break free. But how can she go up against her parents when they're aware of her every move? It's time for Haley Aldridge to remind the world who she is, this time on her own terms. And this very much gives me, like, Britney Spears vibes, like the story of all of her life. Okay, now we are down to the final book. And that is Delicious Monsters by Lysel Sanberry. And I just freaking love this cover. It is just, oh, stunning. This says, Daisy sees dead people. Something impossible to forget in bustling, ghost-packed Toronto. She usually manages to deal with her unwanted, ab unwanted ability, but she's completely unprepared to be dumped by her boyfriend. So when her mother inherits a secluded mansion in northern Ontario, where she spent her childhood summers, Daisy jumps at the chance to escape. But the house is nothing like Daisy expects, and she begins to realize that her experience with the supernatural might be no match for her mother's secrets nor what lurks within these walls. A decade later, Brittany is desperate to get out from under the thumb of her abusive mother. A best-selling author who claims her stay at Miracle Mansion allowed her to see the error of her ways. But Brittany knows nothing but a sham. Knows that's nothing but a sham. She decided the new season of her popular haunted web series will uncover what happened to a young black girl in the mansion 10 years prior and finally expose her mother's lies. But as she gets more wrapped up in the investigation, she'll have to decide if she can only bring one story to light, which one matters most, Daisy's or her own. As Brittany investigates the mansion in the present, Daisy's story runs parallel in the past. Both times, both timelines propelling the girls to face the most dangerous monsters of all, those that hide in plain sight. I'm super excited to read this. Okay. So these are all 17 books that I accumulated this month. Have you guys read any of them? Did you like them? Did you not? Comment down below and let me know. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you. Bye.